Hey everybody, welcome back. We had a week off, but now we are back. I had a nice little vacation and uh, I still drew. Even when I go on vacation, I draw. You're just addicted. I know, I'm addicted to drawing so and painting and everything else, but I had a really nice vacation and uh, spent a lot of time in the water. It was great. Took the boat back out again, did some cruising. Wow. Hope you guys have, are having a good summer. I'm having a great summer. But um, uh, in the last few days, I've been doing some big drawing, uh, and people have been uh, really digging it. And so I thought it'd be fun uh, today to do it live. And what I've got, uh, actually, I, I, this is a drawing that I just did yesterday. Dustin, if you want to go to that down shooter. In one uh, second. Okay. Yeah, but I, um, I've been doing, uh, did it come through? Yep. Uh, so uh, this is one that I did yesterday. This is just done on a piece of brown mat board, you know, like, you, like a mat for a painting. Um, it's acid free, it's cheap, and it's really nice to draw on. Uh, I do a lot of my charcoals on this kind of stuff, but I thought I'd pull out a couple of pencils. I got a white Prismacolor and a brown Prismacolor, and I just wanted to see what it would be like to do kind of a high key image on the, on the board. And uh, this, so this is what I did yesterday. I kind of like it. And, uh, but today I'm gonna do some charcoal. Here you go, Dustin, if you can put that up on the easel. Yep. There you go. Um, look at the size of this thing. I love how big this pad is. Um, you guys are always talk, hear, hearing me talking about drawing big, and I just love drawing giant like this. And so I'm going to do a little bit of this today. Um, but before I get to all that, um, first of all, we've got in the studio today, we've got Nick and we've got Dustin. Hello, everybody. Uh, so this is, I, I love having uh, everybody in the same studio now. It's so nice. Um, but we're really excited because we have finished and it is up now our brand new course on costume figure drawing. So if you are interested in learning figure drawing from a costume standpoint, uh, where I, and, and, and in this course I'm focusing a lot on fabric, how fabric reacts to the body, how folds will happen, the different types of folds, all kinds of stuff. Um, uh, I've got all that in the course, and I think you're going to really benefit from it. Uh, for me, putting the course together, this is something I actually mentioned in the course. One of the things I love about creating these courses is um, when I start them out, I usually have a base knowledge, you know, with the animals and everything else. I've got stuff that's there. But, um, but then I usually go in and do some deep research. I research everything before I teach it, even if I know, even, even if I think that I know enough about it to teach. I still want to research just to learn everything I can uh, and pass it on to you. And so that's one of the things I love about this is because uh, I, I learn a lot myself. And so I've always, um, I've always sat down and drew fabric, drew costuming, things like that from figures, um, but never really uh, delved really deep into the types of folds and, and all of that. And it wasn't until I put this course together that I really learned all that. And so I, and I pass that on to you. Um, plus, we've, we've gone in, we've done uh, timed figure drawing in the course. We've got, uh, the other thing that I'm really excited about is did several long poses. Um, and each of the long poses I do in a different medium. So there's one that I do digitally. There's one I do in watercolor. There's one that I do uh, in oil. There's one that I do in acrylic. And then there's one that I do in charcoal. So we've got all these different mediums. We've got all, and oh, and you get thousands of photographs that uh, Dustin and myself shot uh, over the course of creating this course. Those were fun to do. Yeah, yeah, it was a lot of fun. And oh, so yeah. it's a lot of reference photos of different folds of people in costume. Um, it's, it's great. So uh, it's very, very full. And like I said, it's available now at creatureartteacher.com. Now, um, you can still get it for the pre-order cost this weekend only. So even though price, the whole price the, goes up on Monday, yeah, the price goes up on Monday. So it's actually rather fitting that we're showing the slide of the, of the quote unquote pre-order sale. Yes, exactly, because it is the pre-order price. It's fifty percent off. Uh, the price is going to double uh, on Monday. So get it now while you can. It's a great course. Uh, do you know how many hours it is by any chance, off the top uh, of your head? I can tell you right now. Hold on, it is. It's a it's a big course. It's a big all I know is that the the, the oil yeah the, the oil, oil painting episode, if, if we kept all the footage in there that well, was 16, that was 16 hours. hours yeah just the, the oil painting 16 took 16 hours, hours. Into, into a two hour it's about, four, it's about 14 hours yeah so it's a 14 hour course 
So it's, it's like I said, it's really full. And that's really editing a lot of stuff down as well. So yeah. it's very concentrated. So uh, I really recommend it. I think it's a great uh, addition to your library. Uh, and, and I say library because remember, when you come to CreatureArtTeacher.com, you get to download the courses. They are yours forever. So you can make that part of your digital library. So anyway, uh, enough of that. Oh, and also I want to mention just a couple of other things. Um, uh, and uh, what is it, August 14th? Yep. August 14th, uh, my good friend Chuck Williams and myself will be doing a course on story uh, as it relates to animated features and how to get that feature off the ground, how we make animated movies. And um, I think it's going to be a really cool live course. It's going to be an all-day event on Saturday, August 14th. Um, it's six hours. And uh, Chuck and I have a history together uh, as both director and producer and then directing together. Um, Chuck uh, produced, uh, just finished producing uh, Sonic, which is really cool. Sonic the Hedgehog, not Sonic the Restaurant. No. No. <laughs> and, uh, restaurant, <laughs> do they have anything to do with each other? No? No. Oh, okay. And uh, <laughs> okay, just go back to your drawing. Okay, one is a blue hedgehog from Japan. The other is a mediocre fast food restaurant. <laughs> the, the so, uh, but yeah, that Chuck. That was that. Chuck's. That was Chuck's baby. He got that off the ground, and uh, <laughs> along with producing Brother Bear, uh, where I directed, and we've also co-directed a few projects together. And so, we definitely have a system in the way that we get our projects off the ground and develop them. And I, I kind of pride myself especially in the front end and in, in the way we get the, the initial ideas and develop them and find our characters, find our themes, and kind of find the cohesiveness of what the story is in getting that rolling. So we're going to be talking about all that on Saturday, August 14th. So go on over to CreatureArtTeacher.com slash live. And the spots are very limited on that. Oh, yeah, that's the other thing, too. It's a, it's a limited uh, audience because we want to be able to answer everyone's questions and if we get too many people in there we can't answer everyone's questions so if this is something you're interested in then please go on over there check it out and uh and sign up or let's start drawing yeah let's start drawing i'm, I'm running my mouth too much <laughs> so um one of the things i like to do is uh just as quick reference i'll, I'll go through my my photos and i'll put together a little um uh, bulletin board, a little smorgasbord of images, a little smorgasbord of images uh, in one image, and I throw them together just as quick reference. And I always, and even though I know the anatomy, it's always good to have uh, like a little quick reference to refer to. Uh, so here is, uh, these. Are, this is a big bull uh, African elephant that we saw the last time we were, we were in Kenya uh, two years ago. Really big bull. Yeah, he is a big bull. And um, uh, there was two of them actually they were hanging out together and I just uh, I grabbed a few shots of him because I want to draw elephants today I just thought it'd be fun uh, look up uh, Heinrich Clay Heinrich Clay is one of my favorite uh, ink artists he was a German artist around the turn of the century did a lot of pen and ink did a lot of animals anthropomorphized did I say that right? anthropomorphos uh, yeah. you got it Anthropo yeah yes and uh, elephants having tea elephants uh, uh, and tigers conversing together, elephants ice skating and dancing, and they're, and they're really animated. But what was really cool about them is they were really anatomically correct. And so um, I always thought it was fun to to kind of take those, like something like an elephant, and and pose them in a way that's that's uh, different than what you'd normally see, I guess, like people. Um, sometimes I'll start with a big stick like this. And we can draw, you know, we can draw really big. Very big stick. Yes. So, and then other times I'll just start, you know, just start with a pencil. But here, yeah. I want to get a lot of movement in the, in the, uh, In this, a lot of our uh, a lot of our Facebook regulars are on here and say are saying hi. We've got uh, Erica Bay on. We got Tom Sender. We got Zonji. All right, Kevin Clavering, 
And uh, Karina Mar- Marquez says T G I F. Yeah, no kidding. No kidding. <laughs> oh, speaking of which, Aaron, would you mind walking my dogs come out? Uh, sure. <laughs> Put oh. you on the spot on a live stream. Yeah. And also, Martin Berger says hi. Hello. Hello, Hello Martin Berger. So what I like to do is just find the the gestures, you know, the. Uh, Someone said, Aaron looks like a baby with all those oversized tools. <laughs> <laughs> He's just a little baby. <laughs> I'm just worried. <laughs> and it's fun, it's fun to play with this anatomy in this way. What do I want to do with that other foot? Let's... Uh, Do this. I'm going to change where I put that trunk. That sounded weird. <clears throat> we get a little foreshortening there. I almost said foreshadowing. For foreshadowing. A for wedding. <laughs> a for wedding. Huh? Aaron, what paper are you using today? This. Is, oh, there you go. That's a good question. I didn't mention And what that. size is it also? This is giant. So this is giant paper. Um, <laughs> but it, no, this is newsprint. Very, very cheap. Um, one of the, the downsides of newsprint is that after about 20 or 30 years, it's just going to rot and fall apart. Not archival at all. It's not archival at all. But... I mean, there's it's, things you can do, right? Like put it in plastic, stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, people do that with like, I mean, there's still newspapers around from World War One. Yeah, it, I, but. It, it yellow and deteriorate. Yeah, it'll definitely yellow. And is that, and is the old, uh, the old version of newspaper, is that what this uh, particular newspaper is based off of? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's it's why it's called newsprint. Yep. Okay. Newsprint, yep. Yeah, well, in my own question, what is the difference between, like, um, regular paper and, new, and newspaper? Well, there, there's, a, there's a certain amount of, uh, of acids that, they, that are, I, I, I might be saying this wrong, um, different chemicals are used to make, for making the paper, and there's, there's a, oh, I, I just know that there's acid-free paper, so I'm assuming that they're using some type of acid or some kind of chemical um, that... I guess is a bonder or something, but um, it over time it yellows the paper and it falls apart. And what would um, and what makes uh, using um, newsprint style paper? Um, oh, so the texture of it is really great. Look at that; that's cool. The texture of it is awesome. That's one of the things I love about working with newsprint. It has just a beautiful charcoal goes on it so so well. And um, uh, and it's cheap, and so you know we can get in here and draw. You know this this entire giant pad. There's 50 sheets in here, and it's 24 by 36. I think this cost me like 15 bucks or 20 bucks or something like that. It's cheap. And are there any other forms of mediums that could that could work on it, like any any paint styles? No, paint not paint really. Paint. It's it's not good for any kind of really wet media because it'll it's it just turn to tissue. Through? Yeah, it'll just turn to tissue paper. So it's best for just charcoal or any. Yeah, drawing. Yeah, I mean, like in a traditional art school, like if when you're doing figure drawing class, typically yeah. where like you're doing all, you know, when he was in our in our new course on costume figures, <laughs> we have there a whole is. section where he's doing those two and five yeah, minute yeah, figure yeah, drawings. Yeah. That's what this paper is perfect for, because you just crank out. Yeah, you know, and, as, boom, and as he said, page, it's very boom. cheap, and so you yep. can get more exactly. of them. Yeah, yeah. Yep. and that's typically in art school what you're using newsprint for. Right, but it's fun to draw on. It's just got a great tooth to it. And did you ever use the newsprint um, when you're working at Disney for like any of the concept art or anything? Oh yeah, yeah. A lot of uh, matter of fact, I've got some in the in my flat file back there. Is I've got. I've got some drawings of bears and charcoal and 
Mulan, yeah, Bao Gong and Uh, Kevin uh, Van uh, Cleverson is asking, uh, are, are you now also looking for the, uh, the flow in this drawing? Yes. So that's what I'm trying to get as I draw this. I, um, I definitely am looking for gesture and the fluidity and the movement. Here I've got this, I've got this general flow that I'm trying to get in this direction. What's the hardest thing you've ever <clears throat> drawn or animated? I'm learning a lot from your videos, by the way. I love from Italy. Um, well, there's the one scene that I've always talked about. I've talked about it a lot in roller coaster, not roller coaster, but trail mix up. It was a Roger Rabbit cartoon that I I animated on. I was one of the animators for. And, um, and in Trail Mix Up, there's a scene where Roger Rabbit gets tangled up in this rope and he's swinging from a tree. So he's tangled up and he's rotating and he's swinging, but he's swinging in a circle and it's slowing down along with the rotation slowing down and it's ac actually going to start to reverse as well. And on top of all that, I had to get it to where he's acting. And, uh, and time all that out and get it to, to, to play right. And it really took a lot of left and right brain thinking to get that to work. Yeah, it's funny, growing up, never really, you never really think of that sort of stuff when you're, when you're little and you're seeing these, those kinds of things. But when you get older, and, and like when I got older and I heard you, how you animated that, yeah, I have a complete new view of that and other scenes that are just as complex. Yeah. And I'm just like, how do you these guys do that? Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of which, I just posted a link to the video. Uh, we have a YouTube video where Aaron breaks that shot down and his whole approach to it. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. I just that. posted the link. Uh, Boy, that was quick. Yep. Look at you. I, I didn't realize uh, that they did that. Yeah, we yeah, have a whole video oh. breaking that out, the whole approach to that. Yeah, I did that a long time. that made? Oh, know, a few years ago. Back when I was still living on the beach. Oh, then, yeah, I was probably, I think I was probably in Canada by then. I was out there, I was out there in California, or I was in, uh, yeah. just getting into Canada. In Canada. Twitch, Twitch question for you, Aaron. Sure. Do you have any advice on being comfortable when drawing at the zoo? Do people talk to you and make it harder to focus? Do you sit? Do you stand? Do you rest your sketchbook on the railing? Do you use a hardcover or a spiral sketchbook? <laughs> I'm used to sitting at my desk and drawing, so I'm wondering what advice you have for, for being out at the zoo. I usually stand and just hold, hold the, the sketchbook in my hand. I get a lot of people talking to me all the time, but I like that. It doesn't bother me. And, um, and uh, yeah, and I just, I've done it enough that I'm just used to it. Uh, Zunji's asking, on Roger Rabbit, uh, did you use any video reference, uh, such as like a marble swinging on the end of a stream? No. I, what I did was I broke it down very, very analytically. So I first just figured out a pendulum, and I just worked it out mathematically. I, I, I went, it started a pendulum going back and forth, like so, and just slowed it down mathematically. And then I took that same timing and then I put it in perspective so it's swinging in a circle. So now I've got the pendulum swinging back and forth but it's also going in a circle. And then I took the same thing, went over the top of that and I had the character, I just drew it as a, as a basically a flower sack rotating around and coming to, and then slowing down. And then I took all of that information and animated Roger on top of all of that. And, uh, uh, and it worked out. It just took, you know, it took several weeks to get it all done and figure it all out. Uh, from uh, Manuel uh, uh, Narenia, uh, did you watch the trailer for Disney's uh, new movie Encanto? If you did, what do you think about it? Uh, no, I haven't. What is it? Encanto? Yeah. 
Yeah, it looks cool. It's like a Spanish vibe, right? Yeah, it's a Colombian. Colombian, that's what it is. Oh, it sounds great. Yeah, it's Colombian, and uh, um, and it's a family that lives in a almost like a magical house, like a like the like the house is alive, like all the tiles move and everything. Oh, that's cool. And uh, each of the each of the uh, family members has different special gifts, except for the main character, and it's and it's kind of that that sort of like the one person that doesn't have any yeah. anything special about them, but but we all then he finds out we all have something special exactly. <laughs> but it does look like a lot, a lot of fun. It looks cute and oh yeah, very colorful because you know, uh, Colombian culture is just beautiful and vibrant colors with that. Yeah. Is the table you're drawing at right now flat or tilted? I can't tell from the video. And I, I have it tilted. It is tilted. Okay. So when yeah. you draw flat for long periods of time, do you experience any pain? And if you, if so, how do you deal with it? Uh, no, I don't really get pain. I just don't like drawing flat, especially on a big big surface like this, because then the the drawing is going away in perspective, and uh, my drawings get distorted. So I'm trying to get at least somewhat of a down shot on my drawing to get uh, more of an accurate view. I've got another question from uh, uh, Kevin. Uh, do you pick... Uh or how do you pick the uh, animal to draw? Uh, do you just mix for one week, or do you do like tiger one week, or the lion the next week? I, just whatever I feel like. Feel <laughs> that's like really, it. yeah, that's all it is. It's just whatever I feel like. I haven't drawn elephants in so long, um, up until la uh, last week. And so I, and I love drawing elephants. They're so complex, but they're also really fun to draw. I would love to take photos of them. <laughs> well, you will. I cannot wait. Do you have any tips for a new artist on how to schedule their study or practice time for different subjects? Should you, do you recommend breaking things down individually or studying them all together? Like, should you have, what order should you study animals? You know, everybody, color? everybody's different. So I, I hesitate to tell you specifically how you should break it down. But, you know, for me, I like to break things down one thing at a time um, so I can soak it in better. Um, but, you know, if you're going to school, you might not have that luxury. So um, it's just whatever works best for you, really. What's the schedule again? They, they were just asking what schedule should you order. I know, I was just you order? Oh, gotcha. I'm just saying, what's the schedule? <laughs> oh, what is a schedule? Yeah. What did you think I said? I, I just wasn't sure what you did. <laughs> just weren't listening. Just, just one of those. Yeah. Aaron, did you get yes. a haircut? I did. I got all of my hair cut. All of your hair cut? Yeah, all of my hairs. That's a dad joke. Did it is a such a dad no, joke. I got all my hair cut. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I might need to get a haircut uh, eventually. How do you make artistic decisions? Does it come to you over time, or is it what you're born with? No, it comes. No, <laughs> none, I'm not born with any of that. None of us are. It's all learned, and it comes. And you learn that over time, obviously. Yes. The baby's like, the baby's like a few hours old, being able to get to pencil and sharp and stuff. Yeah, yeah, it just doesn't. That doesn't happen. Erica uh, compliments saying, love the overlapping shapes. Oh, thanks. So you can see it just charcoal goes on here so nicely. It's like drawing on butter. Mm, butter. Butter. Mm, butter. 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 I haven't had lunch yet, so. Oh, <laughs> uh, we, we just had, we just had giant. You know, the one of the best subs you can get, 7-Eleven Italian sub. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> killing me. They're they killing me, Smalls. 
<laughs> Bless you. And, uh, and Kevin's asking, how was your vacation? Vacation was great. It was really, really good. We, we were going to do a road trip, and then we just decided, you know what? I got a boat here that I haven't taken out in months and months. And, and uh, so we like just just a year. Yeah, so we decided to take the boat out. And, uh, man, it was filthy. But we got the boat out and just had a blast. And, it was just uh, a dusty boat. Yeah. It took... Uh, Took Rivers out for his first boat ride. Yeah, my oh, really? son. Yeah, he had a blast. Yep. He was jumping into the water like really like, like, like nothing. nobody's business. Like a cannon. Yeah, we went out we went out to the middle of Lake Monroe. Oh, uh, I wish I was and we went, and we went swimming. Went. Let me know next time you guys go out. I'd love to join. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Jerk. <laughs> there. Uh, Jenna Van uh, uh, Bliet, I hope I pronounced it. What'd you say? It's it's the way it's, way it's spelled. I, I don't know if I butchered the name, but I'll see. Sounds like but, you um, did. From, Sounds like it. From I'm Jenna, going with you. Say Jenna. Uh, can you explain the anatomy of the legs of the elephant? The, uh, the low wrists feels unnatural to me. The low wrists? The low wrists. Okay. Well, in here, I've, I've actually caricatured it a little bit. But yes, I'll explain it in uno momento. Uno momento, por favor. Is that smooth newsprint? Yes. Oh, there's different kinds of uh, newsprint? Mm, sort of. There's different rags, they call mm. the texture. Fascinating. Fascinating. <laughs> Is that uh, 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 just Bill Nye? Nike. Um, I, I don't, I don't know. I just, I've always said that. Just fascinating. <laughs> I, I love, I love Bill you. Nike. I want to animate him. <laughs> He's got the best voice. Your mom thought some, some fresh ocean air will, will straighten you out. Spectacular mistake. <laughs> <laughs> There. So with the uh, let's let's uh, that was a fun little warm up. So with the anatomy, fleet. That's how you pronounce it. Okay. What's that? Uh, the the last thing I butchered. Is it's pronounced fleet, but it's spelled as V L I E T. Ah. Uh, That's why I said it the way I did. So. So think of an elephant's head like a triangle like this. I'm going to give you a very uh, basic, like so, um, with the neck coming off of here. Shoulder blades are up here. If I could draw through, you'd see the shoulder blades in here. Coming down to a shoulder right here. Coming down right here, and they hook into the shoulder. There's the shoulder blade coming down. Now, that upper arm is relatively... It's got a somewhat of a length to it. The elbow. And then you got the wrist down here. And all your metal, metal carcels, tarsals, but it's the, uh, the front feet. Anyway, they stand, an elephant stands like, a, like it's standing like this, like that. If you can switch the camera. Yeah. They're actually, if you can see their bones, they're standing like this. And then this is all fatty tissue underneath. Yeah, without, without you in the lower corner, we don't know when you're doing stuff like that. Because <laughs> we're all hidden on the other side of the desk. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's our, there's our, uh, so, what you end up with, and there's a lot of meat right here and a lot of tricep muscle right here. So you'll see a little bit of definition here. The elbow tends to be somewhat low, and you get this long curve, and then that's the wrist right there. Okay? 
and then here this comes out surrounding the like that. I'm making the head a little bit small. So you can enlarge that a little bit. So the eye being right in here, you've got a, a ridge here, cheekbone here, and then this comes down, which forms the, the tusk. Both male and females on African elephants have tusks. Coming down like so. Really got a ear comes down. The bottom of it comes down just below the jaw, like so. Twitch comment. Hey, Aaron, I actually got a Wacom One two weeks ago, and I started your wolf course that you gave away last year. Thank you so much. Drawing with that Wacom is so much better than anything I've had before, and that class has such great tips and stuff. Just wanted to say thank you. Hey, thank you. Yeah, the Wacom One is definitely a great... Uh, uh, introduction into the Wacom uh, family. world, yeah. So here we got a hip, the pelvis is here, and the belly kind of comes around and then meets the knee down here. Right about even with the the bottom of the the belly right here, which comes in here. Uh, Marie's asking and then you got like still? a tree trunk right here. Sorry, no I'm not going to let you interrupt me. I'm going to finish talking. <laughs> and and then the back feet come in like so. And notice the shape of the back foot is shaped a little different than the front. The front is more like a just off center cone. And the back foot is really pushed almost like a, a horse hoof, like so. Are you still planning on doing a uh, elephant's course? Yep. I've got a how to draw elephants <coughs> PDF. It's only a dollar on the website, or you can get it for free by joining our newsletter at so, CreatureArtTeacher.com. 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 <clears throat> so there it is. So there's your quick elephant drawing. Um, there's a ridge there, a ridge there, belly, knee, tree trunk. See how the shape comes down from the neck? comes around like so. On an on a, uh, Asian elephant, the body is more being just oval shaped with the head attached. And smaller ears. Uh, how do you know the measures between the uh, body parts? I don't, I just do it by eye. Whatever, if it looks right. This one's a little short. I drew them a little bit short, but, and the head's a little small. There. All right. And if you look at the ear, now elephant, elephant's ear is basically shaped, an African elephant's ear is basically shaped like the continent of Africa. Kind of cool. All right, there you go. There you be. There you go. Great. I might stand up here in a minute because this is, I don't know if I'm getting in the way. Am I getting in the way? Uh, not at the moment. What kind of pose do we want to get? Uh, good question. What do you think, dude? Okay. Baseball. Playing baseball. <laughs> Playing baseball. I don't know. That might be complicated. Well, from the previous drawing, uh, someone did comment that uh, thing might, that it would might need a ball in there because it looked like it was kicking around the ball. Mars asking, no knee sticks or flesh paddles? <clears throat> I 
I recently started putting together a character design portfolio. So far, I only have one drawing. <laughs> what styles are recommended? Cartoons, realistic, etc. in a portfolio? Yeah, all of it. You know, you wanna, you, they, they're gonna wanna see all of it. And, uh, and so it's, it's good to have, you know, a, a wide variety of stuff in there for, for the, uh, for whoever's looking at the portfolio to see. What drawing pad are you using here? Oh my gosh, really? <laughs> well, you're, you're at your, your drafting table. Right? Yep, hold on. We're... We're drawing baseball here. Baseball. Play ball. Oh, nice. Catching a pop fly. Yep. This is definitely a challenge. Next month in August uh, 2021, Lions Day is 10th of August and Elephants Day is 12th of August. Uh, any plans to draw? We usually do a, a World Lion Day poster every year. Yeah. So this is how I would normally just really rough something out. question from uh, Zonji. Uh, the golden age of illustrative art is referred to as a thing in the past, but there are so many great representational artists alive today. Do you think the golden age uh, ended, continued, or started again, or what? I think it's ended. I don't think that we'll ever, uh, I, and it's, it's interesting, I, I saw, and I saw that you emailed me that question, I just, I haven't been able to answer. But I, you know, the days of N.C. Wyeth and, and J.C. Leindecker and all the other ones and, and you know, Maxfield Parrish and, and Rock, uh, Norman Rockwell and all these artists living at the same time, um, you know, those guys were rock stars. And I don't know, because of technology, you know, they, there really wasn't, I mean, they... I'm trying to figure out the right way to say it. Um, they just had, they had a whole, you know, the magazine illustration was, was king because of, you know, the, you know, they didn't have photography and everything. I mean, they had photography, but not to the degree that we have now. Right. And so, um, and there's so many like digital illustrators out there, so many more. I, I think illustration back in the golden age was much more selective because it only was traditional methods of creating and you couldn't cheat. And yes, there's ways of cheating nowadays. And I'm not, and I'm not saying that's wrong, but I think there's a lot more people in the game that necessarily wouldn't be in the game, you know, if, if all we had was traditional means to animate or to uh, illustrate with. And so I think it was back then the standards were a lot higher for artists to, you know, get, get through and, and make a living. So I, I would I agree with that. I, I think it's, it's interesting because the tools have made illustration more accessible, which has opened it up to more people. But I think you're 100% right. I don't think illust traditional illustration, like as a career, the way it used to be, it's a lot harder to make a living at it now, I think. I don't think there's as much editorial. You know, illustration used to be all about editorial, like you were saying, magazines, yeah. new magazines newspapers, book covers, they were all illustrated and yeah that there's there's still opportunities like that but it feels like the the 
you, it feels like you have to do a lot more work to produce the same level of income. I guess. It's yeah, and I and, I, and those the, and the other thing too is, you know, those guys were rock stars. They were they were household names. People knew who they were. Yeah. And you know that doesn't exist now. No, that doesn't. Ask anybody on the street to name an illustrator, and if you're not an illustrator, then you won't you won't get one. Uh, from Shelly, uh, whose drawing ledger would you buy if you had the chance? Whose what? Drawing ledger, like like whose sketchbook, like, like a famous yeah. artist. If you had unlimited resources, what would you buy? <clears throat> wow. Uh, Getting one of Clay's sketchbooks would be yeah. Cool. Heinrich Clay would be a big one. Um, William Barry, who a lot of people don't know. I'm a huge fan of who is a very prolific uh, sketch artist that you know drew a, an amazing amount um, back in the '50s. What are bad habits to avoid when practicing drawing the human figure? <clears throat> bad habits to avoid when practicing the drawing the human figure. I think. Um, Drawing too much from photographs can be a bad habit. You got to get in there and draw from life once in a while so that you can understand the figure that much better. Do I have to know the anatomy to make the caricatures of the animals? Yes. Yes, you do. If it's it's you know you got to know what you're drawing before you can caricature it, because caricature is 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 the uh, exaggeration of real life, right? And so, if you don't know what you're exaggerating, then you're just taking a stab in the dark. Twitch comment. Thank you so much for emphasizing that bigger is better uh, when it comes to drawing tablets. I used to draw on a 10 and a half inch iPad, but I recently brought, bought a 22 inch drawing tablet about a week ago. It's such a great drawing experience. Thank you for the advice. Absolutely. It is. It really is. And it's, it, it frees you up. You get to be really expressive and have some fun. Here, okay. There's our, there's our baseball elephant, our naked baseball elephant. Play ball. Whoops, doggone it. I hate it when that happens. So, um, how's Snow Bear coming along? <laughs> well, now that this course is done. Monday. Monday is production day, right? Yep. Monday is our production meeting day for Snow Bear. Now that this course is done, I am switching over full time to Snow Bear, at least for the foreseeable future. Uh, and we're going to get a big chunk of it done. One of the things that we're going to be doing, uh, because it's really going to be dominating my life, is uh, we'll we'll do be, we'll be doing live streams and whatnot. But a lot of it's just going to be, you know, me just working away, animating as if I were at the studio, in the studio, and you guys will be just looking over my shoulder, and during live streams, so you can get to see what it is that I'm 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 doing. There we go. So there's, there's another one. I love drawing elephants in weird poses. It's just fun. What's your thoughts on album art? And do you think that the resurgence of vinyl is because maybe people appreciate the art of a vinyl album i don't know if it's that's i don't know if that's why it's resurged but um i love album art that was one of the things you know when i was a kid new album came out one of the things we did at the record store was go to see the album to see what the the art looked like queen queen always had a great album cover a big robot i love that
I don't know what I'm drawing, I'm just drawing. And that's okay too. Along with your studies, who else do you think we should be learning from? Oh, there's a lot of artists out there. It depends on what it is that you're looking to learn. Um, you know, Proko's got some great stuff, and, and Bobby Chu and uh, Schoolism's got great stuff with all uh, huge varieties of, of artists. Um, Terrell Whitlatch is a great instructor as far as biological stuff, animals and whatnot, and the same kind of stuff I teach. She's very much more scientific approach than mine, which I think is great. Um, <clears throat> Wait, hold on one second. I'm just trying to get this. There we go. Just trying to draw from a different angle. Um, Steve Houston is uh, an amazing, I really recommend. for figurative work. Don Hagen says, what is your art, art of book coming out? I pre-ordered it a long time ago. <laughs> Nick? Uh, should be shipping later this month. Those, those uh, books basically are on a boat, right? Yeah. <laughs> Once we have them, You'll have them. You will have them. Trust us. We cannot wait to get those. We've stuff. got them. We've got them ordered. Yep. Soon as they're in our hands, so we're talking a couple of weeks is the is what we're hoping. Uh, any plans for an advanced two D animation course, like dealing with moving cameras, keeping track of shadows and colors, and all that? Um, at the at the at the. Currently, no. I mean, yes, we are going to be, be doing more animation courses, and they will involve that sort of uh, stuff. We just don't have it on the books yet because of other stuff that we're trying to get done. Oh, someone mentioned Glenn Vilpu is a great person. To learn oh, yeah, about. Glenn Vilpu, of course. Duh. Yeah. Uh, somebody actually asked us to do this, and we're already doing it anyway, and it kind of follows up to your, what you were just asking about, talking about the animation courses. We are planning on making the whole making of Snow Bear yes. a course. Like the idea is trying to teach you how to do an animated short from beginning to end the entire pipeline. I mean, what was asking about that just now? Yes, we are. That's going to be. That's going to be cool. Do you meditate? No. Unless drawing is, meditation. drawing is meditation for me. So even with a pencil, which tends to be a bit more permanent, I can come in, grab a paper towel, and come in and Really kind of wipe it down. Soften up some of these areas where I'm searching, 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 searching. And I can go in and, and uh, redefine. Specifically, I want to pull out some of this. Have you ever been asked uh, to do art for an album? And if not, would you like to? Um, yes, I have. I turned it down because uh, I wasn't, it wasn't my thing at the time. We actually get about 20 emails a week. People asking to do album art. Yeah, I get a lot. And it's not that he wouldn't love to do it, it's just there's not enough time in the day.
I know Glenn Keane is a spiritual guy. Uh, when you worked with him, did he ever talk about his faith with you? That's kind of personal. Um, yeah, he's very open about his his faith. I'll leave it at that. Can you explain um, us a little about how you made the uh, map board with colored pencils? Please. Well, that I really that really started out as a as a, a, a an exercise to I wanted to see what I could do just by creating the highlight area, um, just by drawing in the highlight area, and and I found it was a thing, and which is one of the reasons I wanted to do that. Um, but it also feels a little bit like it's in a fog. And so I found the need to, to add more darks and define it a little bit more without going too heavy with it. And so the, the, all the dark areas were kind of secondary. The primary drive on that was just creating the highlights. Can you grab it again, Dustin, for me? Yeah. My hand is really, my hands are really uh, charcoal-y, so. Um, but if you look, if you look at where the white pencil is, um, that's really all I started out with, just drawing where the white pencil is. And it created a really cool image, but it felt like it needed the shadows added. Um, you'll notice that I never went black. And actually, the white is not pure white. It's like a cream color. So I kept the value range really tight, uh, but still somewhat high key. Uh, meaning you know more towards the the light end of the of the uh, value wheel or the value uh, scale and uh and so i just wanted to keep everything kind of contained in this way and uh and it, it, i thought it had a cool effect i really like it it was more kind of an experiment Any advice on writing a screenplay or script for an animated movie? Um, don't write down, meaning don't dumb it down because you think it's for kids. Don't make it childlike because you think it needs to be childlike. Um, don't hold back. Um, kids can handle drama. Don't make it too adult, but they can handle, you know, scary things and, and heavy themes, you know, things like that. Um, I think that's the first kiss of death is when uh, a writer decides that they need to dumb down their their script because it's for uh, you know kids. Did you know Terrell Whitlatch before you brought her on to Brother Bear? I did not. No, that's where we first met. I tell you, I, I geeked out because when I realized her background, I I was I couldn't believe we got her. I was so excited. She's one of the nicest human beings you'll ever meet. I wonder if I should bring the other foot. What drawing or painting tool did you have to prefab in the past that you are the most thankful for today? 
that I had to prefab. Yeah, what is it? I don't know what you mean by prefab. But like I had to build myself? Maybe prefabricate, I guess? Yeah, but I don't know if um, you're... If, I, not, nothing that I can think of. I mean, I'm not, I'm not that old. I'm, I mean, I've been around. They've always had, you know, stuff that I've needed. You've always had the tools. We have the tools. We have the technology. We have the tools. We have the talent. <laughs> what movie is that from? Tools and we have the tools and the talent. Ghostbusters. I was gonna say it's got to be Ghostbusters, your number one favorite movie. Yep, pretty much. <laughs> Nine times out of ten, if I give you a quote, <laughs> you know, one of the it's Winston. One, was it Winston? Yeah, at, at, when they uh, oh when they blast Gozer and she disappears, and that's they, right. And they're like, ha ha! He's like, we have the tools and we have the talent. And they thought it was, that's what it was. And then the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man appears. Yep. One of the only few lines that I that I remember is the um, the, the call it fate, call it luck, call, call it, it karma. Um, how many years after drawing animals from life did it take you to create good drawings from your imagination? And what have you applied to animal drawing that you've learned from figure drawing? Anatomy, the biggest one is anatomy for the second part of the question. You know, comparative anatomy. You know, you learn, you, when you start understanding human anatomy and you start to understand animal anatomy, you'll find that they are very, very uh, similar. And so... A lot of times when I'm thinking about elephant posing like this, I'm just thinking about human posing and, and adjusting it in my brain. I don't know what to do with the other. I'm going to just leave the other foot out. Do you have any plans for a songbird course? Yes. Yes, I do. Actually, several different birds. We're going to do water birds, uh, Songbirds. At the rate you did the Birds of Prey course, we'll have over 500 hours of bird drawing. <laughs> <laughs> did you ever enter art in a, in a fair? Did you ever get a blue ribbon? Oh, yeah. Yep, yeah, that was one of my strong suits, so I, I, I excelled there. I did all right. Good all right. That's just a weird pose. <laughs> he looks like he's about to do a crane kick. Like what? Like a crane kick, like in. Uh, oh yeah. Crane, crane kick. A dive. Give well, me, Disney give me a pose. He handed Aaron his first set of art tools. <laughs> ha, ha. <laughs> Here's to your ha. future, there, kid. Uh, Dustin, any updates on the photography course? Uh, not yet. I'm just uh, I'm about to get started on drafting it out. But uh, we're making some headway on some uh, other stuff, though. We're working on behind the scenes, so give an eye out for that. When shading, do you stroke with your pencil back and forth, or do you only go in one direction? Uh, it depends. It depends on the, the form, uh, on a few different things. Uh, I generally will go in more than one direction to, to uh, exaggerate form.
Young artists uh, nowadays uh, avoid doing traditional art and directly jump into digital artwork uh, to get commercial exposure. What would what would be your advice on that? Well, I mean, it, it's uh, it, that's fine as long as you're getting enough. I think I think you need to have some kind of traditional uh, experience as well. It just helps. It rounds you out. And because um, I've met young artists that have never really done any traditional work and it hurts, it hurts them. So I would say, you know, get as much, it's fine to, 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 uh, to have that digital expertise, but if, if you can, you know, get as much Sorry, I'm, I'm thinking. <laughs> get, get as much um, traditional experience as well. This one's kind of coming out fun. I like this one. I can see it already. What was the illustration like when you were at Ringling? What were the classes like? Um, everything was traditional, based. Uh, <clears throat> trying to think here. Yeah, that's one thing people don't realize. Everything was traditional. Based. I imagine your portfolio you did on slides, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. There was there was no digital illustration back then. Yep. So. And that was 1989 when you graduated. Yeah. So it 30. Wasn't that long ago. 32 years ago. <clears throat> people don't realize how much it's changed. I mean. It's completely changed. I mean, that's basically one person's lifetime, give or take, not even, well, less than that, 30 years ago, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, somebody born then is basically just now an adult now, and the entire did, an entire industry of art has come into existence. Oh, yeah. Coupled with animation. Yep, exactly. There was no such thing as computer animation. I mean, it was just, there was, but it was so such in, in its infancy. It re really was like the mid '80s when you first saw any kind of uh, digital. Was it the Wally animation. Wally B? Was that the? That was an early, early Pixar thing, I think, and Tin Toy and all that stuff before. Yeah, but even those were yeah, those were way back. Yeah, I mean, look at the uh, Money for Nothing video. Oh yeah. Yep. And your chicks for free. We get the <laughs> movies. Uh, what type of pencil do you use for sketching? This is a, a no, oh, that's a good question. This is a um, uh, 4B um, general charcoal pencil. Generals. I wonder if I can get his leg way up here. Does that look too pushed? I'm trying to get it really pushed. How was it when you got to go to Africa for research for the Lion King? I didn't go to Africa for research for the Lion King. Yeah, I know. You didn't get to go on that trip. No, I didn't get to go on that. Darren. I was too much of a junior animator. Well, typically... I mean, I had my own character, but, um, you know, typically the animators don't go, get to go on those trips. Yeah, it's typically the art directors and directors, right? Yeah, producer, producer. art director, composer... Um, those types, those types. But you did research trips later for Brother Bear and Legend of Tembo and stuff like yeah. that when you were in the directing role. Yeah, I did. I think I'm going to change this. So they're not, I'm getting too skewed. Too skewed? Too skewed. I don't like, the silhouette doesn't make much sense. If I pull this back and down, what happens if I pull this back and down? Do 
Then I can pull his knee way up here. Is there a way to draw a real life animal cartoonish without going completely cartoon? Oh yeah. There's all kinds of levels of caricature for sure. That feels better. Bingo. Bingo. Do you recommend Faber-Castell pencils for drawing? Yeah. I like those. We used them at Disney. So lost without you. Man, I love drawing with these, with these pencils. They, they have pencil? Not an art related question, but did you ever get to my, meet Michael Jackson while you were working at Disney? And if so, do you have any stories to share? Um, I did meet him. Matter of fact, I gave him a tour of the studio. And um, he was exactly the way you would think. He was very shy. He was very polite. Um, uh, we showed, we were making a, a, an animated short at the time, one that I didn't work on, but it was called uh, Off His Rockers, that Barry, uh, Barry Cook, who was one of the directors of Mulan, he was creating it at the time. And, um, and so we, we brought Michael in. and Mike, uh, He was really fascinated by a lot of the guys at the studio keep like collectible toys and uh, action figures and all kinds of stuff on their desks. And Michael was really um, interested in all that stuff in the, in the toys when he would watch. He was very much a child um, when he came through the studio and um, very childlike. And, um, but super polite. We spent a couple hours hanging out. Was that when he was doing? Captain EO or was that after? No, this is after after Captain EO. What's your favorite cryptid? Like uh, cryptids are like uh, cryptozoology, like Bigfoot and Loch Ness Monster. Oh. Um, actually, this is going to come way down. Uh, I've always loved Bigfoot. I don't believe in any of those. I don't believe they exist. And I know I'm in, I'm in a minority there. A lot of people. I don't think you're in the minority. I but uh, um, but I just I love the I love the idea behind them. Yeah, I've always been a big fan of, of Bigfoot. Do you think they're well? Yeah. Do I think there's creatures out there that haven't been discovered yet? Of course. Do I believe in the, the classic, like, uh, Loch Ness Monster, Bigfoot, um, all that kind of stuff? No. I don't believe... I, now, now, I do believe that there might be some kind of ape in the Himalayas that hasn't been discovered. I don't believe in one in North America. I don't know, man. Those woods in the Pacific Northwest are pretty dense. <laughs> yeah. They are. Just watch me take a trip like to Alaska or something. All of a sudden, we we encounter a Bigfoot out there. Like, what? <laughs> I'd love to be wrong.
Someone's saying, I absolutely saw Bigfoot. Trust me, he or she is real. <laughs> gotcha. I've seen it. <laughs> when designing a character... No, wait. When designing a character, can it be whatever you want as long as it's your own work? I think they're talking about, like, for a uh, portfolio. Uh, yeah. Yeah, of course. In other words, I think if, I think what they're asking is, like, could they take a character from an existing thing and do their own design on it, I think is what... Oh, uh... I mean, you've done that from books and stuff. Like, yeah, I mean, it's 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 a... Yeah, that's a, it's a slippery slope, but I mean, yeah, I think anything in public domain, go for it. Like even even things like Peter Pan, you know, that's that's public domain, even though Disney kind of has the the mental real estate on that. What are the dimensions of that pad again? Twenty four by thirty six. And did you have to knock a wall down to get it in the room? <laughs> yes. It does get kind of unwieldy. But one of the things I love about these charcoal pens, just look, look how rich, how dark and rich it, it, it draws. It's really cool that way. Who are some of your favorite classical painters? <clears throat> Probably my favorite is, uh, well, I have several favorites. Um, John Singer Sargent, Joaquin Soroya is probably my absolute favorite, Anders, <laughs> Anders Zorn, um, Shishkin, who's a Russian landscape painter. Bruno Liliafors, who is a contemporary of, of all of those guys, um, but specialized in animal art, uh, really loved. Him and Zorn were good friends. Would you animate Bigfoot if you got the chance, and what story would you tell from the forest in North Cal? I think most Bigfoot sightings are big bear, uh, big bears. Yeah, they are bears. I'm, I'm positive of that. What what story would I tell? I don't know. Yeah. That's a that's a that's a big question. I don't know. I'd have to think on that. What's your favorite Far Side comic? <laughs> uh, you know what there's I, I can't think of like one favorite um, they're awesome they're all awesome I have I have two favorites one is just because I had a t-shirt of it and somebody had given it to me and I loved it it was uh, like a, a primitive people and they were carrying a giant carrot and it just said early vegetarians returning from the kill <laughs> just thought that was funny <laughs> and then my my absolute favorite of all time it's uh there's a little old lady and she's sitting up in a chair i'm gonna butcher her name but she's sitting up in this really high like lifeguard chair looking down over a factory floor and there's people walking carrying stuff and it says mrs jenkins was there to make sure no one ran and then you look at the sign of the door, and it was like Billy Bob's house of ball bearings, banana peels, and scissors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the little ones like that that I just love, like the you know the two bears standing next to each other, and the one has a crosshairs on him. You're looking at him through a scope, and he's he's smiling sheepishly, pointing at the other bear. And then mm -hmm. the um, 
and there's a picture of this little fat kid trying to open the door by pushing it, and it's uh, and it says pull, and then it's it's so and so's school for the gifted. Just stupid yeah. stuff like that. Uh, have you ever met the Bancroft brothers? Yes, I worked with them for thirty some odd years. We've known each other. Very much know them. Yes. How would you make the elephant's faces more expressive? Well, let's try that. We can try one on the next on the next drawing. Actually, I got a Bancroft follow-up question for you. So, since just to elaborate on the fact that you guys work together, obviously in Mulan, uh, Tom did Mushu, right? Yep. Yeah. And you did all the ancestor ghosts. Yep. Yeah. So, so we we a worked lot a lot together. There's, yeah, there's a lot of interaction between those characters. How did you guys? work all that out we would trade off you know depending on who the dominant character was in a shot then we would that person would start the animation um and we would just trade back and forth matter of fact i've got a cell back in my in the drawer back there of main ancestor and uh and mushu and mushu's pulling on his beard and it's a shot that um that Tom and I animated together from the movie. But yeah, it's just a matter of of uh, taking the dominant character and and animating that character first. That was a fun that was such a fun movie to work on. It really was. I think it holds up incredibly well, too. It does. What film do you wish you were animating on during your time at Disney? Um, there's a lot that I wish I could have been a part of. I, w I would love to have animated uh, Marahute from The Rescuers Down Under. Um, I would have loved to have animated on uh, Tarzan. Um, and I really wanted to do character design work on... Uh, uh, Zootopia. How long do you stay outside when you're drawing animals? Uh, till I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> So I mean I that's that's an open question. I'll just we stay out as long as we can, as long as we want. It might be twenty minutes, it might be all day. I know when we when we go to out to Wyoming and Montana it's it's a lot of you know photography and then I'll draw for a while and Nick and Dustin will, will photograph or videotape or um it's just, yeah, whatever, it's just whatever it takes. Did I ever ask the question on um, uh, elephants' faces, faces and expressions? Yes. Okay. And I'm going to do that on the next one. Can you tell us any stories about Kingdom of the Sun, the film that eventually became Emperor's New Groove? I just know that it was it went through a lot of you know directors and story changes and all kinds of stuff. Uh, I wasn't part of that film. That was primarily a California film, right? What's that? That was a California film, right? It was, yeah. We changed pencils. Um, but I remember. Uh, but Phil Collins, Phil Collins had just finished up Tarzan and Phil really got a, a sense of what it meant, you know, what it takes to do an animated movie. One of the biggest things that I don't think the musicians realize when they come on is that a good chunk of their mu music will be canceled or changed, rewritten because the story changes. And sometimes it's hard to tell uh, a big name that they have to change their music. 
and Sting, I guess, had just come on to uh, Kingdom of the Sun. And, uh, and Phil Collins had just finished Tarzan and uh, was getting ready to work with us, or was working with us at the time. Because he, he told he's the one that told me this story. So I got this right from Phil Collins' mouth. But um, he saw Sting at some function, and, uh, and he went up to him. He says, oh, I hear you're, you're doing music for, uh, for Disney. And he goes, yeah, man, I'm really excited, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, and, uh, and Phil asked him, he says, so how are you handling all the changes? He goes, changes? What are you talking about, changes? He goes, you're going to be end up. You're going to be doing a lot of changes to your to your songs. He goes, I'm not doing any. I'm, I'll never do any effing changes to my music. <laughs> he ended up changing, I think, every song in that movie. <laughs> well, you had the, the whole documentary about that, right? Oh yeah, yeah, <coughs> yep. God darn it! I got a lead, a, a, a piece of charcoal stuck in the pencil sharpener. This what's is one your of the things I hate about this? While song. you work on that, what's your favorite dinosaur? Uh, uh, Triceratops. Good choice. Good choice. I'm a Stegosaurus kind of guy. Hmm. How about you? How many Triceratops with T Rex? Arg. You get if a pencil break a. a this, this pencil sharpener I've got is like 30 years old, and it's a great pencil sharpener. But if I get a piece of charcoal pencil that breaks off inside, it gets stuck in there, and I can't sharpen the, pe the pencil. That's not just yours. All those electric pencil sharpeners have that problem. Oh, it drives me nuts. It drives me nuts. When they get stuck in that little, like, stuck next to the blade, basically. Yeah. And, yeah. All right, so there's that. There's another one. That one was kind of fun. I like that one. What's the name of the artist he has for, uh, for the backgrounds of Brother Bear? And how big of a, uh, is the chance of him doing an, uh, an environment course at Creature Art Teacher? JG? Uh, he was our, our background painter. Had, had a, well, he was our production designer. Barry Couser was the head of backgrounds. Barry Couser is awesome. Uh, Jay, I'm not sure where, where Jay is actually at the, at, at the moment. And did you uh, animate any final shots of the beast? Of the beast? The beast, yes. Tons. Yeah. Right, there were six animators on the beast, so one-sixth of the movie is you, yeah. right? Yep. What was it like working with Elton? I didn't work directly with him. I worked with Elton's husband, David Furnish. David Furnish is awesome. He's a super, super nice guy. Uh, we got along really well. Um, I ended up having dinner with Elton John uh, partway through making the film, but I left the project soon after. Yeah, but... Um yeah, you had dinner with him uh, and his husband uh, in Vegas. Yes. It was right. At, was it right after the concert that he threw? Yes. Yeah, your mother and I went. We had a great time. I'm trying to think of a different pose here. Question: If you could improve one of your art tools, what would you improve? And in what way? I love the hard questions. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know. I can't think of anything that needs improvement. Pencil sharpener? Yeah, pencil sharpener. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> if a tip breaks, it's guaranteed not to jam. Yeah. Uh, did you like the new Jurassic World movies compared to the uh, Jurassic Park? Uh, yeah, those are the ones with Chris Pratt. Yeah, they're okay. 
I thought the first one was good. I did not. Yeah, I mean, they. Uh, the second one. Just, yeah, the second one was kind of that. Uh, um, to me, the Jurassic movies are just, they're just repeating themselves over and over again. I don't feel like there's ever anything new. Yeah, people go to an island, they get stranded on the island, yeah. they run away from dinosaurs on the island, yeah. and they get rescued in the end. Yes. You're correct, sir. I guess or at least the, the very first is introducing the park, something goes wrong, everyone tries to survive, everyone leaves. Yeah. And, it's, and it started with Jurassic Park, and then, and then Jurassic World did the exact same thing, just at a bigger scale. Because, you know, it actually opened. But. but I did like the the visual effects. I just wish they did a lot more practical than, than, uh, than CG. Because the first Jurassic Park, they really did a fine balance between the two. Here's a little trivia question for you. Which Star Wars movie has the most practical effects in it? The most practical effects? I would say I would say uh, Return of the Jedi, because there were so many like costumes and. Was it? It's actually Episode One, Phantom Menace, with the one with Jar, Jar Jar. Everybody thinks that movie's all CG. It's got more models than any of the. Uh, Star Wars films before it or since. Really? It's, yeah. It's got a lot of computer shots in it, too. Right. But yeah. Most of what you see are, are miniatures and models and all kinds of stuff. Like, wow. Like the big pod racing scene with the yeah. fans yeah, and yeah, all yeah, that. Yeah. That's all giant models and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Wow. It's, it's, it's kind of wild. People, you know, because Jar Jar was the first fully computer animated lead character in a movie. Oh, so yeah. yeah. So, so that's a people, major breakthrough. I mean, yeah, people sure always think thing. about it as a CG movie as a result of that, but it's yeah. and it does have a lot of computer shots, but it right. also has more practical shots than. Oh, I had no idea. You no, know, it also just has every shot in that movie has some effect. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, just, I mean, heck, the uh, it was when you for it was when you see uh, C three C three PO before you had any plating on, and he was a straight up puppet. Oh, someone suggested you should do a samurai elephant. Ooh. That would be interesting to see. I love just scribbling out stuff like this. and like getting super loose. And then uh, going into you, defining it. Can you explain to us the uh, about your hand strokes that you're making? The hand strokes. The hand strokes, yeah, like the the way you're. I'm just finding I'm finding the the just the um, the most basic shape that I can, and keep, and keep staying very loose. These are not the practical effects you're <laughs> looking for. <laughs> Hello there. Come here, my little friend. Don't be afraid. <laughs> are you excited about the hand-drawn animation sequences in Space Jam 2? Yes, actually, that opens today. Yeah. It's um, out today. On, on, yeah, it's on, on HBO. Plus. Uh, speaking of the band, I'm props, very nervous about that. I, yeah, they, they both worked on it. Yeah, I know Tom and Tony both did a lot of the. Yeah. Nice. Which is kind of cool. They got to animate some Warner characters. Yeah. So I'm going to be watching that after today's stream. I think I'm going to watch the first one just, you know first, what, just to reacquaint myself. You know what I want to see? And I think right now it's got 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. Hmm. Have you seen the previews for Pig? Pig. With Nicolas Cage, uh, no, I saw a picture. It has a it. It's the reviews are through the roof for it. Um, He's it, doing some kind of big resurgence. Yeah, so it's basically it's basically John Wick with a pig. 
Cause, oh, that one. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Essentially, the premise is he's got this truffle hunting pig, and it gets stolen, and then he's got to go get it back. But it, you know, but it's, it's sorry. It's got phenomenal reviews. Really? Yeah. Doesn't expect some that. Yep. I saw the trailer for it. Like, uh, kind of looks all over the place. You gotta be kidding me. I'm just eating this entire pencil. It is literally breaking and breaking. I've, this was a brand new pencil. <laughs> well, it's, I think this pencil is shattered all inside. It's dropped to 97%, but it's certified fresh. Mm. And that's, a, that's what they need. That's 80 reviews. Let the hate flow through the sharpener. Someone just wrote, om nom nom nom. Nom 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 nom. Eating the charcoal. <laughs> charcoal, good food. Did your mother draw too? Yes. And my father. Very much. If you could get any, uh, get for yourself any figurine from any movie, what would you get for your collection? I'm not into figurines. Now, you want to talk about skulls? <laughs> I, uh, I don't know. Um, it, it, unless you're talking about maquettes, are they, I wonder if they're talking about maquettes. They might be. Just imagine they are and answer it that way. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've got all the maquettes. I think I, I'd love to have a beast maquette. It was, um, it was sculpted by my good friend. Uh, uh, Ruben Procopio. Ruben Procopio's dad was one of the main sculptors at WDI. So a lot of the, you know, like the uh, Hall of Presidents and, you know, that sort of thing. He, he sculpted all those sculptures. Her really? Yeah. Uh -huh. Are you still using a 4B charcoal? I am. 4B or not 4B? 4B, I just said it. <laughs> I guess that's the real answer. <laughs> Do you have an elephant skull? No. I want one. Not a real one. Unless it's died of natural causes, obviously. Any tips on mixing colors to create the color you want? I always have a really hard time finding the color that I need uh, when I'm painting. I'll mix multiple different combinations of colors and still not come out with the color that I see on the reference. Well, that's because you're, you're going to make mud when you're doing that. You really do need to understand color before um, when you start mixing. Understanding, you know, primaries and secondaries and their relationships to one another, complements, grays, understanding, you know, color temperature, hue, saturation, all of that are, are things that you need to understand uh, before you start mixing color. And uh, it just so happens we've got a great course on our website by Ronnie Williford, my good buddy. Ronnie, and uh, on uh, color. Called Taking Control of Color with taking Ronnie control, Williford. Yep, Taking Control of Color by Ronnie Williford. It's a great course. Ronnie's one of the best guys I know at, at understanding color. He comes at it from a, with a very analytical approach. You can understand, you know, he's got a very understandable way of, of explaining it.
Speaking of classes available on Creature Art Teacher, you might want to mention what came out today. We've got a lot of new viewers. Oh, yeah. Um, so today, uh, my new course on uh, drawing and painting costumed figures is out. It is out now. So if you pre-ordered it, you can download it. And if you want to go and get it now, you can still get it at its pre-order price uh, until uh, Monday. So this weekend, it's going to stay at its pre-order price. So I would go, because the price is going to double. It's 50% off right now. So go on over to CreatureArtTeacher.com and check it out. Check it out now. That there's some wild, wild stuff. And in that course, you go through all the different types of folds. I go uh, through, there's, in, in the course, I, co I cover seven, seven different types of folds. Um, and then how they relate to the human body. We've got tons of um, photographic reference. Yeah, I think there's over a thousand images, but I don't don't quote me on that. There's at least several hundred. Oh yeah, model reference high res images that we provide. Yeah. Um, I even flew to California at one point to photograph my my good friend, my Hungarian crazy buddy Jolt Horme, who is right now uh, he works. He's an executive for WDI. He's over in Japan right now, uh, building something for WD or for Disney over there now. But right before he left, I was able to get together with him and, and for those photograph who don't him. Know WDI, it's Walt Disney Imagineering. Oh yeah, sorry. Walt Disney Imagination um, Imagineering. Those are the people that build all the rides and uh, the parks and all that sort of thing. All that jazz. All that jazz. <laughs> cha cha cha. Why do elephant ears look like a larger animal came along and took a bite out of the edges? <laughs> because a lot of times that's what happened. They get their ears snagged on leaves. They get them bitten by tiger or tigers, uh, lions. They get in battles with each other and get them poked. Caroline's here, says what I miss. Hey, Caroline, you missed everything. <laughs> you missed it all. Drawing big today on newsprint. Actually, uh, in the same comment, says, hey, guys, been, been out with, with the horse in the sun in England. Sun and heat in England. <laughs> oh, so you want to hear something so kind right. of funny on that topic. Aaron, I was talking to Mike Kayata, who, a friend of ours that lives in Finland. Yep. And uh, he just bought a new house. He's, yep. He was very excited. He's living the American dream, finally, but in Finland. Mm -hmm. And um, he, uh, his big problem right now, I didn't realize this, you know, typically they'll get like, you know, a week or two of warm weather in the summer, like like upper 80s. Yeah. Well, they've had almost a month and a half of high 80 degree weather. And no air conditioning. Year, and nobody has air conditioning. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. So like the restaurants don't have it. The office buildings don't have it. So oh. he, was, he was telling me he's on like a four or five week waiting list just to get a window unit. Oh, oh God. Oh, oh, oh. And by the did, time he gets it, it's going to be gone. Well, and you know, it didn't dawn on me either, but like because it's summer there and they're so high, right? You know, the sun doesn't yeah. even set till like 11 at night. And, yeah. And he said when it sets, it's more like, it doesn't get dark. It's like sunset. Yeah, it just dips it, it dips below it the horizon. You're not getting the temperature relief yeah. that oh. you would normally be getting. Oh, 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 oh. I was like, only Mike would move to Finland and his problem would be it's too hot. Right. Yeah. But hey, you know, it's kind of wild. I mean, I know there's there's heat waves going on everywhere right now. I know out west we're getting crazy fires again in the in Germany, and boy, it's the things that Germany's going through. Oh my gosh. The flooding is so bad.
Have you seen the footage of the oh, yeah. raging rivers coming through the streets, the towns, and those? <coughs> London's been having flooding too. Really? Yep. Do you love Godzilla? Godzilla. Yes. Well, I do. Yeah, I think it's all right. You're all right. Yeah, you're all right. Any desire to draw Asian elephants in their natural habitat? Yes. You have, haven't you? I have. Well, I, no. I mean, I mean, I've never seen them in their natural habitat. Well, no, I take that back. I, I was in... Uh, I was going to say Nepal. Maybe. I was in Nepal. Uh, we didn't see any wild ones. I heard them. I could hear them in the distance. Um, but I never saw it. It was a, it was a bull that was out in must. Um, now, Nick and I had the opportunity, and that's kind of faded now, to go to Sri Lanka to, to do some stuff with elephants there. I'd love to do that, you know, again at some point. jump back to our courses we also have a live event coming up on august 14th with chuck williams um for those that are interested in animation development and storytelling um if you go to creatureartteacher.com slash live uh, we have a limited number of tickets available um aaron and chuck uh worked on brother bear together uh developed a number of projects together uh chuck uh helped get the recent sonic the hedgehog movie off the ground actually uh, which was directed by my friend Jeff Fowler um, anyway go to creatureartteacher.com slash live spots are limited yep it's going to be fun we're going to talk about our methods for getting stories off the ground we always get this question uh, people yeah. ask hey if I can't tune in live can I watch it later and the answer is yes as long as you register in advance you get a recording of the course so even if you can't tune in for the whole six hour presentation or you're busy that day or whatever the only thing is you can't do you can't purchase it after the fact nope you cannot in brother bear what influenced the decision your decision to have the story set in a prehistoric times because then uh, we we did it prehistoric because we wanted to be able to have some artistic license and not offend any cultures. And so we figured if we put it, if, if we did enough cultural research that it would have the flavor like the Athabascans and the native Inuits and that sort of thing. And then, uh, and take the flavor of those cultures and then set it for, far enough back that we could take some liberties and throw in a little bit of what we thought they might have some beliefs toward. Um, then it just it, 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 it's all speculative right as far as what any culture believed 10,000 20,000 30,000 years ago so it, it freed us up in that way And we wanted it, one of the biggest reasons also beyond that was, you know, we wanted this to feel like it, it was a legend, a, you know, the start of a myth, you know, the myth or the legend of the boy who became a bear in order to become a man. And, you know, that, that, uh, it felt like it needed to be told in the past, in, way, way in the past. Yeah. Uh, my own question, what, um, which like form of uh, culture or even like deeper like uh, which like tribe did you guys take the most inspiration from um i would say I mean, we looked a lot at uh, athabascan and then uh inuit aaron have you ever collaborated with john pomeroy yeah yep i know john pomeroy fairly well I've met John. He's a good guy. Yes. So that's about, I think that's a good enough elephant there. So there's our finish on that one. I think I'm going to call it. Call it like on to the next one? Next no. One no, I mean like done. I'm drawn out. You're, you're, you're pooped? Pooped. You're pooped. Pooped. 
Friday. T G I A. So have you since COVID uh, since um, they've kind of relaxed all the uh, safety measures? Have have either one of you been to a theater? No, I haven't no, gone yet. Yet I want to go. I haven't been to a theater. I kind of got used to just waiting for things to come out on streaming now. Hey, I miss the theater. Yeah. Oh, I totally miss the theater. I just haven't gone. I, I I used to go to a movie like once a week, twice a week. Oh yeah, even my friends and I would would do that. Like we'll go see a movie. Like well, see you you're different than you, you and I have had this conversation. You don't like to see movies by yourself. No, I I don't like going out anywhere by myself. Like when it comes to like going, what if it's uh, to like a restaurant or to yeah. a movie theater or anything like that. See, I love my alone time. Like uh, that. I don't. I I keep my alone time at home, uh, because whenever I whenever I think of like going out to going out to eat, like di- like whether it's going to a restaurant or uh, or a movie theater, like to me that's like wanting to be social with like friends, family, or a loved one. But when I'm doing it by myself, it just makes me feel even lonelier than if I was oh. <laughs> I hear the, you. I'm the exact opposite. You like I'm, going out by yourself, too? Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, me too. I mean, I enjoy socializing, of course, too, but I love them. Sometimes it's nice to just get away from people, and, but still go out and do stuff. Yeah. You know? Um, maybe it's because... Maybe it's because we both got experience in long-term relationships, being married here, and that we, <laughs> that we both like to get out for our long time. Right. <laughs> Meanwhile, me being the... That's the what locks on the bathroom door years. is for. Yeah. Huh? So that's what locks on the bathroom doors are for. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> out of your courses, what is the most fundamental or most beginner-friendly? I can't even draw a conclusion. So I thought, <laughs> so I thought I'd ask. <laughs> um... Yeah, we've got an introduction to drawing by Ronnie Williford that's really good. Uh, Tim Hodge has a lot of courses on drawing cartoons. Yeah, so those are really good for for um, learners. Learners, yeah. Um, but it, but the uh, the drawing basics with Ronnie Williford, I'll put a link in the comments, is probably the the most beginner. I think most of my courses you're pretty are pretty uh, uh, intermediate. So there we have it: drawing elephants, lots and lots of elephants, mm-hmm. elephantes. I have to say, one of my uh, going back to the movie theater thing. I would, one of my favorite movie theater experiences was with um, four of my friends and I. We went to the um, uh, what was it? The Regal Theater that we always went to in California. Yeah, yeah, we went to the to Regal Theater there, and we went to see Guardians of the Galaxy. And it was, I think, it was a weekday. It was, it was towards the end of the night. But um, when we went to the theater, we were the only ones in that theater. Yeah, that's we always fun the, when that happens. We had the theater all to ourselves. We were running up and down the aisles. We were. <laughs> We were laughing so loud on certain scenes. We were cracking jokes left and right. <laughs> like we were treating it like we were just ha- we were having fun. You were being kids. obnoxious, but you could because you're the only one. Exactly. And by by the end of the movie, when we were coming out of the theater, we were laughing so hard, some of us were falling over on the on the ground. That's great. <laughs> See, that's always fun. Yeah. It's always a good time. It's either, like that's why I love going to theaters with with friends or family because. I like sharing the experience. When yeah. I go see a movie by myself, I don't get that. I don't want to share it. I want it all to myself. Get away from me. <laughs> see, uh, when I go to see a movie, I'm there getting totally lost in the movie. I don't feel like care who's around me. Yeah. You know? It's like, I'm not talking but to I like. I'm watching the movie. I, I also like the being able to talk with somebody immediately after. Yeah, no, I get that. That's definitely a fun part of it. Yeah. 
because then you guys have something equal to talk about. Well, there we go. There you go. I think that was it, right? These are all of our, elef oh, that was a different one. These are all of our elefantes. 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 That was fun. That was a good time, y'all. So um, I recommend going out there, go get a big pad of newsprint like this, get some charcoal, and get dirty. Get dirty. Get, get in there and draw. Dirty. Get it all over your shelf. Get it all over your shelf. So I love about drawing in uh, charcoal. You get you just get messy. Turn into a little five-year-old kid. Come on, come on, paper. Go on, paper, moving out. So um, once again, my course on drawing and painting costumed figures is out now, and it's going to be. Uh, the pre-order price is going to be 50% off through the weekend. So if you wait until after the weekend, you're going to miss out on the deal. It's a great course. It's uh, over 14 hours, and we've got tons of extra material, uh, photo reference to keep in your library. Um, it's, it, it's, a, it's a lot of really cool stuff, uh, and I'm really excited to get it out to you guys. So enjoy that. Um, also, remember, if you want to sign up for the course uh, the live event with Chuck Williams and myself. We're going to be teaching our methods for getting animated films off the ground and developed. And that's going to be August 14th on Saturday from 11 o'clock until 6 p.m. a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So figure that out according to where you might be in the world. And, um, uh, and that's going to be a lot of fun as well. So go to creatureartteacher.com slash live uh, for more information on that. You can go and sign up. Remember, it's going to be limited seating, or not seating, but a limited audience, uh, because we want to make sure that the audience is small enough that we can answer everyone's questions. So anyway, I hope you guys had a great time today. I did. Uh, it's so nice being back again. Um, I was actually really ready to get back to work. Uh, I love drawing. I feel like I'm retired. I don't feel like I'm working. <laughs> I feel like I'm retired, really, i got to say. Um, well, you, you won't starting on Monday when you're in full production on Snowberry. Exactly. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But even then, we're working on our own project, man. I mean, that's, I love that. So, um, but anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I had a ball. And uh, why don't you go on out there and try some of these methods. Try drawing big. Loosen up. Have a great time with it. Uh, get, get dirty. I, I love getting dirty with charcoal. That doesn't sound right, but... Uh, I, <laughs> <laughs> But it's fun to draw with charcoal. So go on out there and put some beauty back into the world. That's what we do as artists. And uh, be nice to somebody. And I will talk to you guys next week. So go on out. Have a great week. I'll talk to you then. Bye. Can we be up?